Hi beautiful people, how are you all doing today? My name is Mark Kevin Reyes. You can call me Mark for short. I am a sugar artist and a sugar craft instructor based here in Manila, Philippines. And if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And this is where I do anything and everything creative. And of course, I love making things sweet and in style. So for today, I've decided to share with you a very beautiful flower which is actually one of my signature blooms although a lot of people are actually requesting this for a long long time but I've uh, developed a different technique which is far from what I teach from my online classes so this is the very basic sunflower technique which is non-wired and using of course some molds okay so this is what it looks like okay so if you want to learn the more uh, the more realistic and more detailed sunflower as you see here on this picture uh, you can contact me on my social media account so I can better assist you for the online class but for now for purposes of this video I'm gonna share with you how to create this easy sunflowers okay as you see there so what are you waiting for let's start hi guys how are you all doing so for today I'm going to share with you a lot of different tips and tricks so first of all, uh, these days it's very humid and rainy. So I'm going to share with you how you can easily uh, dry your mako paste or how can you somehow fasten the drying time, okay? Um, because mako paste, even though it does not melt on humid weather, unlike gum paste or sugar paste, if it's rainy or humid, sometimes it takes a little bit longer for it to actually dry. Okay, so sometimes it takes overnight. So if you want to dry it faster, like in 10 minutes quick time, I'm going to show you my tips and tricks. So for today, I'll be sharing with you how to create sunflowers. Yes, sunflowers, because a lot of you have been asking me about that. But this is the easier version, uh, which is far away and different from what I release on my online classes. So if you wanted to learn how to create a sunflower that is... Um, without using any molds like this one and looks more natural um, you can send me a message for my online classes I have it all there so for now this is gonna be the basic uh, sunflower that I'll be sharing with you today so to start off we have here bamboo skewers or barbecue stick which is basically gonna be the stems of our sunflowers so I'm using um, this is my long nose so at uh, first I break off around one centimeter okay, of the bamboo skewer or barbecue stick so a lot of you may be wondering why am I using a bamboo skewer wherein I can use a floral wire well definitely you can use that but for me bamboo skewers it's more cheaper and it's more safer to insert on cakes so yep it saves you a lot of cost so this is what I'm using so cover it with floral tape just like that remove the excess so again this is how I cover it first you need to put it at this position okay not higher not lower at the middle cover pinch twist pinch twist pinch and twist make sure that you cover the top part first before you gently and slowly go down and twist 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 okay so this will act like the loop if you're using floral wire okay um if in case you want to use floral wire you have to use wire number 18 okay because the lower the number of the wires the thicker and the stronger they are if you don't have number 18 you can use four pieces of number 22 and then just uh, combine them all together using a floral tape and then cut it at your desired uh, size and then make a loop at the end okay so what I have here is mako paste so this is straight from the refrigerator or chiller I let it thaw at room temperature for about 30 minutes to one hour so as you can see it's really hard but not that super duper hard okay so the first thing you want to do is to get a small amount of the paste, okay? So this is my technique on how I can dry it faster. Okay, so I have here a small amount of the paste. 
as you see it's very crumbly and dry it has a lot of elephant skin so uh, you have to condition it first but since it's humid I'm not gonna use uh, shortening but instead I'm going to put cornstarch on my hands so it will not stick and then gently knead and massage my paste until it's smooth and okay okay just like so see that until you see that there are no longer elephant skin or rough edges it's good to go so a lot of you uh, may be wondering how can I dry this faster because it's still soft so this is my technique so for the center we need to dry it faster right so we're going to use this mold so for this uh, you can get this in the Philippines you can order this at Bake at Al this is their complete sunflower mold um, if you're located in other countries uh, you can get also one from Flower Pro you can also get from Emmanuel Villan so he ships via DSL so you can check their profile I'm going to put on the comment below so what I'm going to do now first I will get a measure that I want okay so I'm putting it on my mold so this is enough for the exact size this is a ball that is around four centimeter in diameter okay approximately around four centimeter so what i'm going to do for the center to harden faster this is a tylose powder that i separated from my entire batch i only use this when i'm making figures or if i want to work on faster with my flowers so you also have to take note that when you add tylose powder the drying time will be faster so you have to work faster on your flowers okay so it's gonna be all fast 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 just like that okay so knead and massage your paste first okay and then um we will dip this inside our container with tylose powder just like that just put it on top everything that sticks onto it is just the amount that you need okay so now i'm just gonna fold okay fold 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 just like that Okay. And eventually, as you knead in the tylose powder, you will notice that it's um, already getting stiffer, it's already getting more firm, and it's harder to fold. So that's an indication that it's drying faster already, so you have to work more fast. Okay. Get all the excess gum powder or tylose powder okay so after that uh, what we're going to do now cover your tylose powder and then this is our sunflower mold so just dab some cornstarch and then tap it off so again um, this is just the basic sunflower if you want to learn the realistic one you can ask me for my online class um, wherein I teach how to make sunflowers without using any molds so and it looks more realistic okay so here i'm just going to press it in to the mold this is the sunflower mold okay so as you see i focus on pressing the sides so the center is a little bit bumpy i'm going to insert my um, bamboo skewer that has a loop insert it just like that and then press and lock okay it's important to lock and press on the stick so that when it dries it's not gonna move on different directions okay then i continue on pressing and pressing and pressing and make sure that everything is locked on place and then after that on the side it would look like this okay so you can easily take it out and what you're going to have is something like so okay, you see that it's very easy and beautiful this one you need to let it dry and then we'll proceed on how to make the petals hi guys okay so now we have here our mako paste again so i'm going to color it with yellow um i decided to share with you the process on how i color paste because this has not been included on my past videos especially on youtube so that you know how a color progress okay so this is plain white mako paste i'm going to add some color yellow because we're making sunflowers for today 
okay? So, I'm using Pietraco Color Gel, color yellow. But if you want to use any other brands, you may do so, like Pro Gel or Sugar Flare. I just love using this brand because uh, it's very easy to use because it's like on a toothpaste container like that. It's on a tube. So, it will be easier for you to actually transfer the color onto your paste. And then, um, the colors are very vibrant. And you can definitely mix and create your own shades of color that you want. So you have a lot of color yellow there. So what I do usually, I fold it first on half. And then I use my rolling pin to actually help me on combining the colors together. Okay? So as you see, I press, fold, press, and fold. So now I am going to just add a little bit of Tylos powder. Okay, so I'm going to cut this in half. Well, actually not. That's just a joke. So I'm going to cut this in half. So again, this is the Tylos powder that is separated from the entire batch so that we don't contaminate the entire batch of the Tylos powder. So here's our paste. I just dip it inside. Everything that sticks on it, that's good and okay. okay. So after that, again, I just use my rolling pin to press and combine the Tylos powder onto my paste. You have to take note that when you add Tylos powder, it will dry way faster. Okay, so you have to work very fast when you add Tylos powder. That. But I only do this uh, if I'm in a rush or if it's rainy so that I can easily form the flowers that I want without getting trouble on how long will it dry. Okay, So see that it's already well combined and it's looking good. Okay, So you can get the excess uh, Tylos powder there and then combine it all together. Okay, so now I'm going to dust off some cornstarch on my table so it will not stick. Put it on place, add some cornstarch, and then we start rolling. So, believe it or not, again, this is the basic way on how you can make sunflowers. There is a more realistic version that's a part of my online class. So, you can also take that. Uh, don't be shy, just send me a message and I'll be happy to assist you along the way. Okay, so as you observe when I'm rolling, I just roll in one direction. Because if you roll on different direction, parts of the end will stick on it and it will roll like that. So you'll have problems with that because two parts will stick together. So if you don't want that to happen or if you want to avoid that, you just roll it on one direction, okay? Just like so. So now, I'm going to add some cornstarch again. We are using this daisy cutter or plunger cutter, which is one of the basic tools that you can get at baking supply stores or even order online, okay? So for the exact size, this is around um, 7 centimeters, okay, or 3 inches in length. Okay, and then our center that we made earlier, as you see, it's already dry and hard because of the Tylos powder. This is around 4 cm. Okay, so to start off, we are going to cut at least two, only two sets of this. Okay, so add some cornstarch and then I press. Okay, so press hard. Okay, as hard as you can. You have to use all your muscles on this one, okay? And then, flip it over, add some cornstarch, and then just press on the sides, okay? So that you can easily remove the petals and cut it out clean, okay? 
After that, just press it out. Okay, so we have one. Put this inside your container so that it will not dry. And then proceed again with cutting another one. You only need two. Okay, so I just press. Again, press as hard as you can. Okay. Like when you're pressing, you have to think of those challenging times that you have surpassed. Okay. And then eventually you have a beautiful output in life after you have surpassed that challenges. See, making sugar flowers is just like life. There's a lot of challenges along the way, but after you have finished making that flower, despite all the hardships, it's gonna be very beautiful and okay. It's very satisfying. So after that, again, I just press on the sides of the petals. I have a clean cut. Take off the excess paste. See that? And then just push it out. Okay, so we have another cut. And then put it inside so it will not dry out. Okay? And then this one, just knead and massage it again. And put it inside also so it will not dry out. So here's the thing. We're going to work by segments, okay? Not one petal at a time, but by segments. So when I say by segments, I would have to cut this Daisy um, cutter, okay? So I'll show that in the next video in a few minutes. Okay, so now I'm gonna share, you, uh, share with you actually how to cut it in segments. So I have here small scissors. So first, I'm going to cut this in half going straight through just like that okay and then after that I will cut this in parts okay this one part one part okay so basically you have you need to have at least three petals in one segment okay but sometimes uh, you'll get only two that's okay. That's definitely okay and fine. Don't panic if you only get two at some parts. That's normal. Okay, so after that, you put the other petals inside first or the other segments. And then I'm going to show you how you can actually um, treat this one to make it more realistic without using any veiners at all. So what I have here is my foam pad. Okay, sorry about that. It's a little bit shaky. So you just need to add some cornstarch on top and also on your foam pad, okay? And then what I'm using is my, um, this is my sugar shaper tool. If you don't have this, you can use a Dresden tool. If you don't have a Dresden tool, you can use uh, the end of your, um, the end of your paintbrush, you can also use that. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you first using the end of a paintbrush. It's on a slanting motion. So first, add some cornstarch. I'm going to press on my petals a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. Okay, just like that. Okay, and then flip it over and then just press left and right, left and right, just like that. Okay, so if you're using this tool, it's the same technique. But you get a more defined petal because you can actually just pull it off a little bit as you do it. Okay, see that? Press, press. Okay, same here. Press, move to the left. Press, move to the right. Press, move to the left. And then move to the right. Flip it over. Do the same. Press, move to the left and right. Okay, until you have something that looks like so. Okay, I know it's a little bit round, but. Here is the next step on how you can make it pretty. Get your fingers to work and then gently pinch and pull, pinch and pull. So that will actually add to the character of the petal that we're building. Okay, we do it the same with the other petal. Pinch and pull, pinch and pull. So that it's gonna be pointed just like so. Do it also on the other petal. Pinch and pull, pinch and pull. So here you already have a segment of three sunflower petal that you just need to dry over there, okay? Just on the side as you work on with the other petals. 
So again, I'm gonna show you this is another set which is only two. Add cord starch, same process. Press, move left and right, okay? So just the same process. I press and move left and right. Do the same with the other one, okay? See that? Flip it over, press, move left and right. So you see that? Okay, and then after that, again, get your fingers working by pinching and pulling. Okay, see that? Again, I pinch, I pull, pinch, I pull. Okay, so you have another segment of petals that you just need to dry. Okay, then work on with the other so on and so forth and then after that once you have it all laid down and drying just let it dry for around 10 minutes because we added additional tylos and after that you can already attach it onto your sunflowers right it's very easy and fast okay so first i'm gonna work on with this and then later as we dry it we'll attach it all to the base hi guys okay so another technique of actually um flatting or thinning out the petals aside from using the foam pad um, you can basically use it uh, directly on your flat surface or at your table just make sure you add some cornstarch okay add some cornstarch also onto the segment of the petals and then just do the same technique press move left and right press move left and right okay until you have something that looks like so see that very pretty and we are having very beautiful veinings. Again, uh, if you don't have this uh, sugar shaper tool, you can also use a like the end of a brush or of a paint brush or a bamboo skewers. Okay, and then after that, just the same process. Pinch, okay? Pinch and pull just to make it pointed. So you have beautiful sets of petals. Okay. Hi guys, okay, so for now, I'm going to share with you how to easily color the base or the center of your sunflowers. So, I do have a lot of different techniques on making sunflowers and the more realistic and detailed one is available on my online class. So, that one um, does not need any molders or veiners at all. So, if you're interested, you can message me for that. So, now, uh, what I'm going to share with you is the basic technique on how you can do sunflowers. Okay, so earlier we made the center and it's really hard already. So now we are going to color it. So one of the fastest way on how you can create a beautiful color on flowers is using an airbrush. But you have to know and you have to keep in mind that when buying an airbrush, it is important that you buy one that has a heavy duty quality. So how would you know that? First, the compressor. This is the compressor that pumps the air should be at least heavy well of course it should be heavy duty well aside from the weight um this one as you can see it's made from metal so this is really heavy duty and it's already four years old from me now and then um you should have a pin just like this because i know uh, online some are selling just the pin of the airbrush okay it will not work alone you should have the pin the what they call this the wire and also the compressor okay so now we're going to color the base of our sunflower so we just use a mold for this one which i shared earlier okay so first we turn on our airbrush okay so it's a little bit noisy because this is heavy duty so we'll start with three colors first okay so uh, we'll start off with yellow and then we'll go with a little bit of green and then black or brown okay so what I have here is gel color that I mixed in with gin or vodka so that it will dry faster. So I'm going to put it just on top of my uh, airbrush, okay, my pin. So I'm going to pour it in very little, not too much, okay. And then my advice when you're using an airbrush, always spray on the surface first. And then as you see, I'm working near the sink. So it will be easier for me to clean afterwards. Okay. Okay, so we have that. See that? Um, you can also use a tissue paper for you to see the color before you can apply it onto the flower or the base. So I'm going to focus more on the sides. So to avoid the unwanted splatters, you should first spray from the outside. 
gently go inner on to your base or the flower that you're coloring just like that okay as you see i always start spraying outwards before i go inner because that way you have more control you see that so that you don't have the unnecessary splatters that we don't want again i repeat so you see i spray outer and then i go on to my flower okay just like that see that and then we return the excess. And now, okay, that happens sometimes. You just connect it back. Okay, that's normal. Especially if um, it's a little bit loose on one part. Okay, so now we're going to add color green. Very little of green. Okay. Again, this is green with a little bit of gin or vodka. Spray a little. Okay, and then I go on to the center. Okay, just like that. Not too much. Okay, so we're done. And then we return back the color green inside. And now we are going to use black or brown. So for now, what I have here is black. This works fine and okay. Again, this is gel color. And then I added some gin or vodka. And then I shake the, bot the bottle so that the uh, gel color will be dissolved evenly. Okay, so now we're going to focus on the sides because the sides you want to make it darker. Again, spray from the outer part before I go just on the sides. See that? Okay, so that's pretty. We have one and then normally what I do, I spray from the outer and then I gently go on the inner part. Just like that. Okay. Again, just on the sides. Make it a little bit dark, not too much. Okay, there you have it. So we're done with our centers. You see that? It's very pretty and nice. So you need to dry this at least... Um, 30 minutes to 1 hour, okay, so that we are sure that it's fully dry. And then later, we'll attach petals, okay? This is just the basic technique of how you can make sunflowers, okay? Hi, guys. Okay, so our flowers, uh, I mean the petal bracts are a little bit dry. So you would know if it's already good to use um, because sometimes it depends on the humidity on your area if it's really humid uh, sometimes it would have to be exactly 10 to 15 minutes since we added additional tylose powder but if it's dry on your area normally it works very fast so uh, an indication for you to know is when you hold it from the base and you when you held it straight up like this the petals stand up straight so when it does that it means it's okay and safe to be attached on the base of your sunflower so here is the base of our sunflower, which we colored using an airbrush. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to tilt it over. Make sure that it's dry before you proceed. Okay, so it's dry. So we're going to use two sets of the cutter that we made. Okay, so for this one, we just use the ordinary daisy cutter, the plunger cutter. Okay, this one. And then just like what I showed you earlier, we cut it into segments. Some are three petals in one segment some are two petals okay so we're going to use just two so what i have here is my pilo glue or sugar glue to make this one this is two tablespoon of warm water and then you add one fourth teaspoon of tylose powder and it's gonna be glue like like this if you don't have tylose you can also use cmc powder okay so first um i'll work with this one first you need to attach or put Tylo glue just on the bottom part. Okay, see that? So just put Tylo glue on the bottom parts of the petals. Okay? Just like so. And then after that, again, what? Get one segment first. And then we're going to attach it onto the base of our sunflower. Just like that. And then pinch, 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 and pinch. 
the reason why we pinch is that so that there is more movement okay and to make sure that the petals or the segment of petals are well adhered onto the center okay then we attach another one sometimes the petals will overlap that's definitely okay and fine already good and okay so I'm gonna share with you I'm going to flip it over so there you have it this is our easy sunflower so it's very pretty so this one you can actually dry it sticking on a styrofoam let's say we have a styrofoam here okay you can actually dry it sticking on this way okay so that the petals won't flap until it's fully dry or another technique is you can actually hang it over Okay, but for me, this works best if it's like that, okay? So, that's all. This is our beautiful, easy sunflowers, okay, using a molder and without using any veiners, okay? This is also non-wired. So, another tip, you can actually just push some of the petals a little bit inward if you want to look it more natural. If you want it to look more natural, what I mean... Okay, so that there is more movement. So that's very, very pretty. And also, if you want to add more uh, texture on it, if you have a yellow petal dust, you can definitely dust some of the edges right here. Only the edges, and it's gonna look so stunning. Okay? So there you have it. And if you want to learn how to make a realistic sunflower, just like what you see here, um, you can message me. Uh, that's included in my online class. And that sunflower does not need any veiners, does not need any molders at all, okay? Thank you, have a great day! Okay, so now we are done with our sunflowers. So I'm gonna show you. Again, this is just the basic technique. Okay, so here is the under part of our flower. This is the non-wired method. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, um, this is my petal dust. So I added a little bit of cornstarch to make it a little light. So just to add some more details, I'm going to put very little of my, um, what do you call this? my petal dust just on the sides of my flower okay again just on the sides these are petal dust not too much okay very little just to make it a little bit more realistic and then if you added way too much you can actually go on with another brush let's say a fan brush just to brush off the excess okay so there you have it look at that and of course the petals you could add some more dusting to make it more realistic okay so this is our beautiful easy sunflowers using a mold so for the center we use this one okay and then for the petals we use the daisy plunger cutter okay and then um this is non-wired and if you want to learn the more detailed one 
that's available again on my online class. Thank you and have a great day everyone. So this is the back part. Bye! Hi guys, so here is our uh, sunflower that's already done and dry. So now uh, we're just gonna add some details. So this is just an additional. So what I have here is um, red with a little bit of yellow to make orange and then I added some gin or vodka. Okay, so we're just gonna add some highlights on our sunflowers to make it pretty. So again, we're using an airbrush. When you're using an airbrush, you have to make sure that before and after you use it, you clean the airbrush. So I do have a video on how you can clean your airbrush so that it would last for years. Okay, so you turn it on. Okay, and then after that, uh, we're just going to add little color onto our airbrush pin. Okay, and then after that, you can just test it out first on the surface. And then we will go on to our flower. Okay, again, same technique. I spray first outer and then I go inner a little bit. Okay, just like that. Just to make it more alive. See, that's very pretty. But I find it a little lighter. So I'm just going to add a little bit of some more reds to make it darker. So that it will be prettier. Okay. Just a little more red. And then mix it well. Okay, and then we're going to test it out again. Okay, that's a beautiful orange. You see that? So I'm going to do it on one of my flowers. Okay, so spray from the outer, gently go inner, onto the side. See that? That's how easy and fast that is. And also at the back part, you can also spray it so that it would look nicer. See that? So this is our sunflower okay and then we do the same also the other one okay see that just to have some glows and also onto the last one okay, okay see that so this is our uh, sunflowers again the other one I want to make it a little bit more dark okay and I am done so here this is the finished product this is our easy sunflowers without using um this is non-wired sorry this non-wired sunflowers the basic and easy technique okay see that's very pretty to be placed on cakes so i hope you learned a lot thank you and have a great day bye